Hello and welcome. This is another video on how to use DTSA2. This is an, today's video is an introduction to the new and improved uh, Spectrum Bundler. The Spectrum Bundler is basically a way to uh, use uh, complex standards in a way that is uh, efficient and effective. So what we're going to do today is uh, show you how I suggest that you go about uh, creating uh, standard bundles. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open a series of uh, spectra that we're going to be using uh, to create our standard. So we're going to be using an uh, ADM glass which is a uh, uh, an engineered glass um, constructed here at, uh, at NIST by uh, Doug Meyer and uh, it looks like this. So I've uh, opened, in this case, 15 spectra. This is more than I would usually do. Usually I recommend collecting about five spectra. Um, usually my, my rule of thumb is I collect five spectra each at 60 seconds. Um, what this allows you to do is actually compare the spectra and determine um, which ones are most similar to the rest and use those as to build your, your bundle. Anyway, today we have uh, actually 15, so we'll work with that. Um, the first thing I actually recommend you do is go ahead and actually quantify this. So uh, I'm going to go up to Tools, and I'm going to select the Quantification Alien, and then I'm going to just uh, step very quickly through this, but I'm going to use uh, uh, Spectra to, uh, to quantify this, and so I'm going to pick out a series of Spectra that I collected before and use these as my standards to quantify this material. So using calcium fluoride for calcium, SiO2 for both silicon and oxygen, and that's what we've got, something like this. All right, um, stepping quickly through, see all of the uh, references that are required. So. Um, the references are required to provide the shape information, and these spectra that we use as standards are all nice, simple compounds. And so there are no interferences between the elements that we need to use from them, so we end up being in this situation where all of our references are good. This is, this is what we want. Um, so we're going to carry on. Um, we're going to select the... Uh, uh, default here, continue on, and uh, one of them, it says, is slightly low on the Duane Hunt limit. I'm not too concerned about that. Anyway, when we see, we see that this all works out very nicely. We have analytical totals in the sort of 99% range. That's good. So this suggests to me that these uh, simple, com uh, simple standards that we used are actually good for this uh, quantification. All right, so I'm going to finish that up. All right, so we're, we're good. I'm going to take a quick look at one of the residuals just to make sure it looks good. I always do this. Uh, this is a little interesting. I'm surprised that there's so much uh, uh, structure underneath this peak, this little S shape. Um, I don't know what that means, but otherwise, all the residuals look pretty good. All right, so I'm going to go back again, and I'm actually going to do one more thing. Um, I'm going to construct some uh, spectra to demonstrate one of the features. And I'm going to do that from the command line. I'm going to construct a, a, a spectrum that has 99% of the intensity on one of the standards, and I'm also going to construct one that has 95% of the intensity of one of the standards. Okay, so I'm going to select all of those. Let's get rid of this junk here that we just created in the quant process. I'm going to select all 15 standards plus these two additional ones that I constructed. And as you can see, that they all look uh, uh, pretty, uh, pretty similar. If we look carefully, we can actually see that the one that's 95% uh, uh, of 
the first standard is actually a little below, but otherwise you really can't tell much difference between any of the standards. All right, so let's go up to Tools here and select Make Standard Bundle. So the first thing we're going to get is a uh, one of these uh, alien type interfaces which you, steps you through the process of, of creating a standard bundle. Uh, first thing it's going to ask us for is what is the material? Well I've entered that material into the database previously and so I can just put the name that uh, it's known by in the database here and uh, it will uh, read that information in from the database like this. So that's good. Okay. The standard contains these elements. If we wanted to use it only for a subset of these elements, we could remove some of these. But I really want to use it for all of the elements that are present in the material. Uh, this information is being read out from inside the files. Uh, this is the probe dose associated with all 17 spectra. This is the beam energy and the detector. The detector is this default detector that you see over here. All right, so that all looks good. Now we see um, the next page basically allows us to pick which of those 17 spectra we're going to use in our bundle. Well, um, we the dialog box provides a score. This score, essentially you want it to be close to one. Close to one means that the uh, uh, spectra are similar up to count statistics, differing only by count statistics. Um, when you get a number above one, like this one down at the bottom, that suggests that this spectrum is actually substantially different from the other spectra. And um, because this is an extremely homogeneous material, we're expecting a score somewhere around one. For materials that are less homogeneous, like natural minerals, for example, you may never be able to collect a set of spectra that are only limited by count statistics. Um, for those materials, you just have to do the best you can. And one of the advantages of averaging together many spectra is that you end up with a standard that represents some sort of mean for that material. But having said that, this, this material is very homogeneous, except we find this one here, the one that we actually can read it to be 95% the intensity, uh, has a score that's marked in red of, of, of 6.9, where the rest of them are a little around 1.3, uh, or a little or below 1.3. So I'm going to remove that one, and you'll see it now gets tagged as false. Well, now all the rest of the scores have improved slightly. They're actually slightly below one, except for, of course, this one, which is 99% of the intensity. So I'm also going to remove that. Now we've got scores that are looking really, really good. So we're actually going to make us our standard bundle from 15 out of these 17 spectra. Okay, then we get some options here. Um, if you're using this standard, uh, if it was collected from a unsupported thin film and it's being used at, for the zeta factor method, then you can select this thin film standard. If you want to specify that there's been a conductive coating on the material, uh, you can do that here. Um, and then it'll ask you for a reference for that material. So if I were to uh, select this and put a level of carbon on here, it would ask me for a carbon reference. And there's also an option uh, independent of that to strip the carbon contamination off. Or in the case that this, was an, uh, this material uh, didn't contain native oxygen, then it, uh, you also could strip the oxygen content off too. Okay. So um, we get to this page here, and this page here tells us basically what references are required. So if we look at the spectra, um, it isn't clear that there are a lot of interferences, but there, but there are, because uh, in the low energies, the peaks are too close to each other and we can't separate them. In the high energies, you can see that these peaks interfere. So we're going to need references to be able to fit those peaks cleanly 
And so uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to provide them. In fact, we're going to use the spectra that we just used to quantify the material. So I'm going to select uh, SiO2 for silicon and oxygen, um, aluminum, calcium, titanium, um, zinc, and germanium, both the L's and the K's, and one of the K's. Actually, the K-beta is not interfered, so it doesn't need a, a reference. Okay, now we're looking good. Now we can finish this up, and we'll be able to save this away. So it saves it away into multiple different files, one for each element, so that you could use one of these elements from this standard, or you could use all of them. You can mix and match. Um, so we're just going to store it with this standard name, oxygen standard for the oxygen and the name of the material from which it came. You can see that I've been doing this earlier just to get ready for this video, and you can see that there are already some oxygen standards. It's actually going to, uh, in the process of this, it's actually going to take the old one that's here and rewrite it with a timestamp um, that says when the, the one that's being overwritten was saved, and it's going to save the new one as the default like this. That way the old spectra will not be overwritten but will be saved and if you wanted to go back to it you could use it again. So I'll save that and then I'll go through all of the elements, silicon, calcium, titanium, zinc, germanium. And then finally it saves the sum spectrum, that is the sum of all of the 15 spectra that we uh, created the bundle from. Okay, so we save that away. Now, um, that sum spectrum is displayed here, and that's this one here, which is this green spectrum up top here, and represents the sum of the 15 spectra you see down here. So we have a very, very high quality spectrum made up of 15 spectra. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to test it. I'm actually going to use this standard, these standards that I've created, standard bundles I've created, to quantify the spectra that I used to create them. And I would hope that the result I get is going to be very similar to the um, uh, uh, known composition of the material. So we go to the standards, I select the standards I just created, and it looks like this. I step through. Again, because the bundle cre carries with it the necessary references, all of these are satisfied. I don't need to provide a reference for any of this, even though I'm using a similar standard. Go through and quantify. It complains about the Duane Hunt for one of them again, but otherwise we're okay. Okay, and when we do that, we see that our, uh, our analytical totals look really pretty good, very, very close to unity, as we would hope they would for uh, um, quantifying material against itself. Um, so we'll finish up, and then we'll do, look at a couple last things. Um, one of them we're just going to use a little scripting magic again to see how these results actually compare to the known composition. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the known composition to that material. It's ADM605A is the known composition. OK. And then I'm going to go to the command line. And for S in the selected spectra, that's these three selected spectra that you see above, we're going to use the compare function 
to uh, compare the known composition to the measured composition and its output as a table like this. And we can see that uh, uh, these are looking pretty darn good. For example, we, uh, for this particular number two, we measured oxygen to be uh, this, or this is the a stat known uh, composition of oxygen, this is the measured, and you can see that the level of agreement is, uh, is very, very good. So that suggests to me that we've created some really nice standard bundles. So anyway, I hope this will help you to use these, uh, this new uh, improved uh, spectrum bundler. And uh, if you have any questions, you can always uh, uh, email me um, through the uh, DTSA2 website. Thank you.